Okay, so we've got Newton's first law. We're working on Newton's laws of motion, then we'll apply them. You don't get them until you apply them. So come back to these when you get stuck and really think, what is the meaning here? Okay, but let's say it clearly and come back as, you, as you're working problems. Push yourself to go beyond common intuition, which Aristotle used, and common the way it should be, and made a lot of errors. Incorrect. So this takes us beyond that, which is the power of it. Newton's second law now. This is where we apply the method. This includes and extends Newton's first. So in essence, this is the real deal. We have to employ the thinking of Newton's first law, the intuition of Newton's first law. Things will go forever in a straight line, same speed, if the forces are all balanced, not canceled. Um, so we're looking at causing change of motion. Okay, Causing change. What causes an object to accelerate? And as you might guess, or you know, this is the intuitive part. You know, if you want, if you see someone on the street that you know you haven't seen in a while, you walk, push them in the back, and they'll accelerate. So uh, that works. You know, acceleration of some object or receiver is not zero. That is, it'll increase speed, decrease speed. If it's slowing down, there's an acceleration, and the only way it could be slowing down is not by natural order, but rather because the net pushes and pulls from other objects on that object are not zero. It's not balanced, right? So in this case, it is not balanced. Okay? Um, there has to be a cause. So if you look at it and you see something is increasing speed or decreasing speed or turning, there is a net force. Whether or not you can pick it apart and find out what it is, there's a net force. Right? Uh, conversely, if you can calculate that the net force is zero, well, then that's zero. If the net force is not zero, there will be an acceleration. And the acceleration will, in fact, be parallel to the net force. Let's take a look at that. So let's put this into a conceptually clear form and then a mathematical analysis form. So the conceptually clear form is this. This is what it means. The acceleration of object R, whatever it is, you know, is caused by, equal in magnitude and direction, the, the forces from all other objects that are interacting with R, Although, which I call the sources, S, you call them whatever you want, agents, on that chosen object. And sometimes in a problem, you have multiple objects, and you look at them and I say, okay, well, green is being pushed by pink and being pushed by purple. Now I can look at pink. Pink is being pushed by green and my hand. Uh, purple is being pushed by that. And then, of course, there's a force of gravity. So... We're going to, in, in problem analyses, we're going to choose R, and we might then flip to look at another object that's interacting. And that's going to be part of the game. And again, you divide and conquer, and don't expect real simple solutions. It's, now we're moving up to 1,000-piece puzzles, right? So the acceleration is caused by all the interactions, the forces from other objects on that one object. So we're not, we don't care what happens to S. We just care what happens to R. But it's resisted by the mass of object R. And so if you push the same amount net force on a kid on roller skates, you might send them flying into a wall. If you do it on, a, on an elephant, not so much, right? So the effect here, you can have the same net force, but the effect, increased, decreased speed, change direction, the effect is very different because mass resists acceleration. It's the inertia, right? Uh, OK, so that's pretty clear. The subscripts are really important, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So hopefully, you know, you, this is somewhat intuitive. But again, it can be tricky. All other objects acting. Now, I don't, again, in this, I don't care what happens to S. Right? It doesn't matter what happens to S. If I walk and I hit the wall and I bounce back, or the desk, you can worry about the desk, or you can worry about me. Please worry about me. So, uh, so, so that's, the, that's the idea. Now, notice also that this includes the Newton's first law. 
If that's zero, then that's zero. If the acceleration is zero, you know the net forces. There could be a million forces, but they add up to zero. Balancing, not canceling. They don't go away. They might squeeze. Okay. All right. So in mass resistance, so that makes kind of sense. This is the result. Now, how do we apply this? Well, we apply this mathematically more often than not just by rearranging it. And uh, the method comes really out of this. When we do a force analysis, we're going to do this with our deep insight. And so I'm going to take the mass and move it over here. Be careful. People make this mistake a lot, even in textbooks and lectures. So let's not do it. The sum of the forces from all objects interacting with our chosen object, our object of focus, or receiver, sources and receiver, the sum of all those vectors, which you take just vector addition, right, break them down into components or do arrows, whatever you got, is equal to ma. So people say, for example, uh, one way people write this is, you might say f equals ma in a low level class. Yeah, kind of fine, but that is horrible. Ugh. And you go, well, let me make that better. Uh, oh, yeah, these are vectors. F net equals ma. Well, that's a problem because that's a vector, and that doesn't show a vector notation, right? So, you know, there's the vector over there. That's getting better. But even that's not good. Why is that not good? Because, yes, it's the net force on object R. Um, did I do that right? That's not bad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was going to leave off the net. Uh, that, now I got vectors, but we need the net. <laughs> we need, leave the net. It's got to be all of them. Now you can write it as net force, or you can write it as the sum of the forces. Either way is fine. But it's directional, it's a vector, right? And you have to include them all. You can't look at one. You can't say, oh, this is the acceleration from this force, and this is the acceleration from this force. That's a mistake. In fact, the acceleration is a description of what it does. It only does one thing, right? That's the rate at which it changes velocity. So anyway, write it this way. Um, and I want to make a, a little quick point. So what we're going to do here ultimately in our analysis is going to be that the sum of the forces from all S on R in the X direction equals MAX and the sum of the forces in the y direction, of course, on R equals ma y. Now, I've left off subscripts for now because we'll get to that. So just with any vectors, we divide and conquer, right? We split the vectors up into x part and a y part. Key thing, I usually ask this on an exam, is ma a force? Explain. Well, is it? Is ma a force? The answer is no. MA is not a force. People say it is. Correct them. Help them to speak a little more carefully. They might be very accomplished. But MA is not a force. Why? Because a force is what? It is an interaction between objects. M is the mass. It's a property of the object. No matter what, it hap what happens, this guy has a mass of one kilogram. Right? Whatever happens. It doesn't care. Whatever, whatever's over here, fine. It's still got a mass of one kilo. The acceleration is a description of the motion of R. This is not an interaction. It's very important. In more advanced uh, mathematical formulations, you can move this to the other side, call it a pseudo force, and it makes your math techniques uh, easier in, in complex situations. But nonetheless, it is never a force. Absolutely not. Force is an interaction, and this is of R. This is of R. This is what happens. And so we say, well, but it says equals. Remember, I mentioned this in an earlier uh, video, I believe, that equals means the same amount, and in this case, direction, as. Two people have the same amount of money in a bank account doesn't mean person A gets to drop money from person B's bank account. 
They aren't the same, right? Bank account A, bank account B, right? So uh, these are equals does not mean the same as always. We're going to see cases where it does mean the same as. So we have to think physics, right? The physics here is that this is all the interactions, and they will make this object increase speed, decrease speed, or turn, or, or both at the same time, right? And that's it. How do we do it? We've got to draw a picture, look at all the forces on this guy, choose the object, break it down into components. It's a little tedious process. And then analyze it. So this is the, this is the key. All right, I think we're clear. MA, is it a force? Not a force. Not an interaction. That is huge. I've seen many textbooks, uh, not just physics, astronomy, and even uh, uh, sort of biophysics and stuff, that have incorrect draw drawings. That's not a force. You, that's what happens. This is what happens. Force causes this, but the mass resists that, as we said over here. Force causes the acceleration. Mass resists the acceleration. Interaction. So that brings us to the next one. I think I'll do that on the next video. Um, we're going to come back to this and really work this guy. That's the, that's the essence of force analysis. When you get it, Again, things in physics seem really hard because they are subtle and deep. Otherwise, what's the big deal? Um, this started a whole revolution in scientific understanding, um, and now we have cell phones. So it's quite deep, but if you understand it, all of a sudden you get over the hill and you go, ah, I, I get this. What, what was so hard? Why was that so hard? So let's get you to that place. And, uh, and again, you cannot understand physics without applying it and doing problems. It's like you can, you can give bits of life wisdom to a, a six-year-old. You know, they're, they're not going to get it until they live a little bit, right? Uh, so, so too with this. You've got to get in there and use this as a guide. And when you get stuck, that's a beautiful place because that's where you're going to learn and deepen your intuition. Okay? So let's go on to uh, Newton's third law in the next, in the next video.